Hey, what's up YouTube? Houston here. For those of you just finding my YouTube channel, welcome. Please remember to hit that subscribe button and that bell. And for those of you that's been following me and supporting me, salute. And for my favorite patrons, always double salute. Now, today's video, we're going to actually be uh, reviewing Digital Federal Credit Union. And I know that a lot of you guys aren't too happy with Digital Federal Credit Union, but there's a way that you possibly can leverage DCU to your advantage. And I'm going to talk about a strategy in this video to help you. That being said, let's look at some of the uh, data points with debt with a DCU. Membership is open to anyone through membership. Reach out uh, reach out for schools, uh, $10 fee. Uh, you may find another um, associate of theirs, probably get it for $5 to get a membership, right? Uh, the cool part about it is that with DCU, they portray themselves as trying to be one of those credit unions that's real flexible and everything. But hey, We'll, we'll find out, right? Uh, so understanding that DCU, they pull Equifax FICO 5 mortgage score, okay? And so where I'm usually talking about credit unions pulling either your FICO 8, your FICO 9, this is one of those credit unions that actually pull your FICO 5. All right. And again, I know this is confusing about the FICO scores. For those of you that needs to understand better about your FICO scores, getting access to your real FICO scores so you can understand the difference between your uh, FICO mortgage score versus your FICO bank card score, uh, click the link and grab your uh, council. Excuse me. Click the link below and uh, get your uh, FICO score. Then if you need to do a consultation, schedule a 30-minute consultation so I can show you how to take advantage of your FICO scores. Now, they do offer business bank accounts, right? But to think about it, they don't offer business credit cards. So that kind of sucks. And yes, they do pull check systems, all right? They do pull check systems, but they do have one unique uh, thing going on for them is that like if you have equity in your car, you can actually borrow the equity in your car through them. All right. So that's a good thing about them. Now, here's something else that's interesting about them that I don't know if a lot of people are taking advantage of. But if you have, put a, a comment below and let me know what you think about it. They have a, a quick loan, right? And, well, they have different loans, and we'll talk about those, but this quick loan is very interesting because um, here, here's the facts is that you have to be a member for at least 90 days to borrow from two, 200 to 1,000, right? But the good thing about it is no hard pull on your credit, okay? So that, that's the good thing about it. Um, and if you have been with them for at least six months, 180 days, then you can borrow up to 2000 okay? Now, you can only have um, one uh, quick loan within a certain amount of time, and then the maximum is three within a 180-day period. So I guess these quick loans basically are like payday loans, all right? And so still isn't bad. So if you've been a member with them for three three months, but well, here's the thing about it. What if you did this? If you was able to get the payday loan, right? And you took some of that money and you say that you did a secured credit card with them. Now you use their money and you got two trade lines with them using their quick loan, right? So that way you have two trade lines reporting on the credit file from DCU. That's helped building up your uh, personal score, right? And it's not only helping you build up your personal score, it's also helping you build up your internal score. Remember, I keep telling you guys that a lot of credit unions, they're going to start looking at these internal scores. So by you having multiple accounts with them, it's going to make it easier for you to get approved for like credit cards and um, other lines of credit, right? Now, they also offer secured loans. Um, 
The good part about it, like if you open up a personal loan with them, which is interesting, like you don't have no payments for the first 60 days. So that that's interesting. So you open up the loan and you don't have to worry about a payment for the uh, first 60 days. So that can be to your advantage as well, because now you know that you have money to work with. All right. So that's pretty cool about that. Uh, they do offer credit builder loans from 500 up to 3000 and you pay it from 12 to 24 months. Now, this credit builder loan is basically like Navy Federal's pledge builder loan. But here's the thing about it. I'm going to tell you guys, when dealing with these credit builder loans, the biggest um, mistake that I've seen a lot of people have with these credit builder loans, they would open up a credit builder loans and the maximum amount of time that they will keep it for is about six months. And I keep telling you guys, do not do that. You want to keep that loan, uh, that credit builder loan or pledge loan open for at least 24 months, okay? So if you had this credit builder loan, say for 3000 you put the 3000 out, I would uh, pay like maybe 90% of it down, and then the other 24 months, I would have a payment coming directly from my uh, checking account to pay on it, right? The reason that you want to do that is because by you having these multiple loans on there and you're paying them now slowly, it helps build up the um, credit score, okay? Now they also, if you want to use your savings secured, if you want to use your savings account to secure a loan, you also can do that as well. That being said about DC Credit Union, uh, DC, DCU Credit Union, um, one of the ways that I would do it, since they said that you can with them is average about a 580, 620 credit score, right? Um, here's what I would do. I would probably focus on building up my FICO 9 scoring, okay? And the reason that I would focus on building up my FICO 9 score, because I'm able to get uh, much more funding. And more likely with my FICO 9, most of the time with a lot of the uh, credit unions and fintech companies, with your FICO 9, they're not going to put a hard inquiry. Uh, with the exception of like Navy Federal, they do FICO 9, in which we're going to talk about. Them. But I would build up my uh, FICO 9 score with, with these type of accounts, broke credit, uh, perch debt reports like Netflix and everything. Then, of course, we just talked about the the uh, pledge loans and credit builder loans, uh, Experian Boost, uh, removing some inquiries definitely helps increase the credit score. Now, here's something that I want to tell you all. Like, if you apply for a business credit card and they do a hard pull on your personal credit, that type of inquiry is much easier to remove, okay? Uh, because it's only, and you, you have less of a chance of your account being closed down because it's a business credit card and not a personal credit card. So those account inquiries, if you get them, it's okay to have those removed off, all right? Um, other inquiries, you can have those removed off, but it's much easier if you had a business credit, you apply for a business credit card, they put a hard inquiry on your personal credit. So challenging that inquiry because it's not showing up on your business credit file. Now, I would, would say this, that since uh, Capital One, if you apply for a business credit card, they pull all three credit bureaus. Now, that one may be a challenge, but you may be able to get it off, that hard inquiry off of maybe two of the three credit reports. Also, in terms of the FICO 9, adding authorized users, uh, if you use your debit card a lot, you can sign up with companies like uh, Extra Debit Card app on your phone or One Financial that report all of your debit card transactions as a trade line to help boost up your credit score. And then, of course, you uh, paying your rent, and that rent is actually showing up as a trade line as well. Okay. Now, here's another option that you could do. If you're able to get into DCU and say that you've been with them for at least three months, and that they gave you that uh, quick loan. Just say that they gave you the quick loan for $1,000. You can take $200 of that and put it on 
this in rewards with Navy Federal, especially if you have challenging credit and you try to build a relationship with Navy Federal as well. Um, also, taking another portion of that uh, payday loan, which that quick loan, if taking another portion and opening up a pledge loan with Navy Federal. The reason that at this point, because I really don't encourage about having a whole lot of uh, open pledge loans. I don't think it's necessary. However, if you're trying to build an internal score, especially when it comes to Navy Federal, you want to have as many accounts as possible, especially if you have challenging credit. The reason is it make it much easier for you to get funding. That's the reason we talk about the internal scoring with Navy Federal, about um, opening up the, uh, having a direct deposit uh, going on, then opening up a uh, flagship checking account, a savings account, maybe a CD or a money market account, but also having the end rewards and the pledge loan because that's going to help your internal score. So if you still like it and say a 555 um, or 560 or something like that, it still will allow you to be able to get funding through Navy Federal, okay? That being said, another option you have, say that you get a, a quick loan through um, quick loan or a personal loan. If you get approved for a personal loan with, um, with DCU, if you get a personal loan through DCU, say they gave you 5000 then I would probably um, also add the Sable uh, one credit card. Now, here's, here's the thing about it. Good thing about it is that after four months, this actually becomes a primary, uh, unsecured primary if you have good online, on time payments. So that's the reason I like this card. Now, some people, uh, they said that they don't report fast enough, but at the same time, it is still a primary. So that's the reason that I like the card. All right. Um, Here's another option. Say that you, with DCU, um, like with their personal loan credit cards and stuff, they said that you can do it with a 580. Um, I'm telling you right now, people, I I would not go that low and with, with trying to get um, a loan with DCU. They may will give it to you, but I would probably at least come in like with a 620. Now, if I have a 620 credit score, then, and I have high debt to income ratio, meaning that my um, income is lower than my expenses, and it's averaging about maybe about above 55%, because with most, here, here's the problem with a lot of credit unions that people don't understand, and with banks. You can have a great credit score. You can have accounts with them. But if your debt-to-income ratio, just your debt-to-income ratio uh, is over 55%, they may deny you. So that's the reason I keep coming back to these fintech companies and especially the low-hanging fruit on the FICO 9. The FICO 9 is low-hanging fruit, people. And the thing about it, how to leverage it, the low-hanging fruit is using your FICO 9, getting approved uh, for loans and stuff, and then getting funding. Like with, again, like with this upstart, as we see, it pulls FICO 9 TransUnion softball. So no hard inquiry. And it actually shows you up front how much you approve for before you actually take out the loan. Okay. Now, that being said, uh, the annual gross income is about 12000 Again, with the banks, um, banks and credit union, you have to, most of the time, in order to get approved for a decent amount of money, you're going to have to be um, r between 29000 and upwards, okay? And 29900 29, and upward for a personal loan for his income with, uh, like, DCU. All right. That's also becomes a factor as well. Um, and most people miss that. And so when they get denied, they're like, hey, you know, I have, excuse me, I have a good credit score, but do you have enough income? OK, so that's a no, also another thing that plays factor and why you may want to look at these uh, fintech companies first. All right. That being said, like I said, minimum 
income is 12000 You must have a valid email, phone, bank account. Now, here's the interesting thing. They focus more on job history and how long you've been at your residence. Those are their biggest factors. So it ain't about credit score with them. It's about how long you've been on your job. It's about what's your debt to income ratio and how long you've been at your residence. That's the reason that these companies are also uh, really, they really have an advantage. Understand that their interest rates may be higher than traditional banks or credit unions, but it may be much easier to get qualified for loans, okay? Even if you have a recent bankruptcy. Like with DCU, you can, your bankruptcy has to be at least two years old, right? So that's another thing where with these, you can be in a Chapter 11 and they still will possibly approve you, all right? Now you also have Upgrade, another one. So here's some data points. Um, minimum credit score is a 560, uh, but average credit score is a 678. So that means that that's the average, but you don't have to have a 678 to be approved. Okay, so their loans go from 500 up to 50,000. The average income is 78,000. Uh, but again, you don't have to be making 78,000 to qualify, but you have to have at least two accounts, and their DTI is 75%. That's why these type of companies are winning because a lot of people they have good incomes, they have jobs, they've been at your residence and stuff. It's just that their DTI is so high that they can't get funding from traditional lenders. So that's the reason you want to look at companies like this. Now, unfortunately, their situation is not operating in Colorado, Idaho, New York, Vermont, Virginia, Wisconsin, and Wyoming. But at the same time, I just gave you Upstart as well, okay? Now, if you have more questions about, and they, again, TransUnion FICO 9, so softball, so that's another thing. You don't have to worry about that hard inquiry just to check to see if you're approved. So that's another good thing about it. So if you, if you on your credit score, know that, hey, I got a lot of debt, but my credit score is about 600, then those two companies may be of assistance to you. If you have any other questions, you need to schedule one-on-one -on -one consultation. Click the link in, this, uh, in the description, schedule consultation. Also, if you need to understand what's your FICO 5 that DC, DCU is looking for, what your FICO 5 score is, then click the link and get your real credit score. All right, so this is Houston, and I appreciate the support. Thank you.